welcome to God's House Tuscaloosa's weekly worship services, the videos that we have in the time that we are not meeting because of COVID. This is Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. Today is also the, the second Sunday of Christmas tide. You hear the song about the 12 days of Christmas. It's about these 12 days from December 25th until Epiphany on January 6th. But it's also the beginning of a new year. And there is much to reflect on in this past year. And there is much to prepare for in the coming year. So now let us prepare our hearts and minds to ponder the words of our scriptures today. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be our shelter and strength in these uncertain days. Loving Jesus, Teach us your ways of building peace and healing relationships. Living Spirit, dwell deeply in our hearts to give us wisdom, discernment, and guidance in walking in God's ways. O Holy God, cleanse our hearts of all hate and evil. Tender and merciful God, comfort and encourage our hearts. Powerful God, take our lives which we give to your care and may they proclaim your glory everywhere. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our creator, redeemer, and helper. Amen. Paul writes to the Ephesians about the spiritual blessings for living today. As we move into a new year, my thoughts turn toward the near future. At the beginning of 2021, we had hoped that the new vaccine would free us from our COVID restricted lives. This has not worked out as we had expected. What do we envision for 2022? And will our visions become realities? Jeremiah speaks to a people who've been taken hostage, not like us, but we have been in a way in COVID. Still, the defeat and exile of Israel was a hard blow, just as our continuing pandemic is for us today. Deaths, hardships, personal losses, failed national strength have beaten down the spirit and hope of joy. Some may retain a sense of power amid the chaos of today, while others are more realistic about the devastation which is around us and in our own lives. Jeremiah speaks to the despairing. He says, God is faithful. God intends good for you. This time shall pass and you will see God's handiwork in restoring your community to health and peace. Will this year be that kind of comfort and celebration of new life as diseases and civil conflicts recede and we return to whatever the new normal will be after COVID? This is one way to reflect on and plan for a new year. But there's another way offered by Paul in his greeting to the Ephesians. You are already blessed by your faith in Jesus Christ. You are blessed with spiritual gifts of grace for living today. You are already enjoying the abundance of God's love in your daily lives here and now. And then John introduces his telling of the gospel of Jesus Christ with the word of the love and life that was from the beginning, which has already shown upon all people. That birth that we celebrate at Christmas tide has shown upon the world. Paul speaks to those who have believed as having been chosen by God, adopted as God's children, and having seen God's glory and grace and power and enfleshed and embodied in this Jesus Christ. We have already been blessed and restored to grace. Our joy is in our healed relationship with God and in the fellowship that we find in our faith communities as this healing spreads to our human relationships. I suspect that most of you like me are somewhere between the grim uncertainties of the continuing pandemic and its accompanying impacts on our lives and a calm trust in God's faithfulness and abundance. We are not able to deny the realities around us, and yet we find hope, courage, and confidence in faith. 
the challenges that we will face in the coming year are not greater than the resources that God has abundantly blessed us with for living through them with love and grace to God's glory. The key to our joy is not financial success or victories or good health or pain-free existence. It is in our capacity to recognize God's blessings already at work in our lives and our relationships. It's in our ability to exercise these gifts of God that have already been given to us in Jesus Christ. It's in our faith that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God or God's presence with us in the spirit. So while this troubled time may continue politically, while the pandemic may be with us indefinitely, as changing weather and natural disasters may happen, inflation, prejudices, and religious persecution, which show no signs of abating, continue around us. Those who have been blessed with spiritual blessings have resources that the world does not comprehend. We can look at what happened last year and be grateful. We can look at today and feel inner peace without fear. We can look forward to the future of another year with hope and trust in God's continuing presence with us through whatever may come. Belonging as God's people, as God's own children, does not give us license to be prejudiced against others. It invites us to join, invite others into God's family. Being chosen by God's grace does not give us license to ignore or exploit others. It calls us to be generous toward them as God has been generous toward us. Having the word of truth, wisdom and insight does not make us authorities that have the power to rule over others, but it calls us to be a witness to the light of truth and the power of God's love to save us all. We do not ignore the suffering around us because we have the compassion of Jesus Christ and are able to comfort others with the love and hope that we have found in him. We are not silent when there is an injustice or in truth, because the love and truth of God burns in our spirits and our hearts until we can not help but speak and act with courage and integrity in difficult situations. When we feel weak, our humility becomes our strength because it is then that the spirit is able to use us mightily for the praise of God's glory, because we have given ourselves to God first. John speaks of Jesus who became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. And now the spirit of God dwells in every believer, giving us the same witness. So in these times of our being human and living in this world, like in this moment, still celebrating Christmas tide while at the beginning of a new calendar year, we are truly blessed with every spiritual blessing for living in these days as faithful witnesses to the glory of God who now dwells within us. The song the angels sang is now our message, glory to God in the highest and peace to all on earth. Our mundane living amid whatever happens next in life is infused with the presence of God's love and grace and power at work in and through us. The spiritual gifts we have received empower us and they're meant to be used in this time and this place to God's glory. We have a message to carry, a truth to live, a light to shine, a God to serve and glorify. Did the plans that God has for us, all the good that God intends for the word of truth to accomplish, it will be accomplished. And there is nothing that can separate us from God's love and care for us. Amen.